Okay, the uh, web core is back together again, looking pretty much like it did when it left the factory back in 1952. A couple of things I want to show you on this thing. I'm not going to go through everything on this because I've already showed you on the uh, previous record changer. I'll briefly go through it. But uh, the part that I wanted to show you mostly was this, the fiber gear here. This rotates all the time the turntable's rotating. It never stops. As long as the motor and, and turntable are going, this thing is moving. That's part of the velocity trip. And that's the weird trait of these things, uh, the characteristic of them. And if you have a Zenith, an older Zenith Cobra Changer, it's the same thing. Webcore, Webster, they all use them. Uh, uh, Stromberg Carlson, a lot of companies used the Webcore Changer. Uh, if it wasn't Webcore, it was VM or Crescent, and uh, sometimes Seberg had a home changer, but mostly by about 1948, Seberg was gone. But anyway, we're going to take a look at the underside of this, because that's the most interesting thing. Put the camera down for a minute, and I'll get this up so we can see it. And put the light on. Okay, now on the bottom here is something else. This is uh, this is one thing I wanted to tell you about. This spring was not here when this thing was manufactured. In later productions, this spring is here. And this was an early production, and this was not here. The early production ones have a tendency to keep rejecting when they're not supposed to. And the reason they do that, there's a little uh, there's a little dent right there. That little dent. That's got to, this has got to rest into that little dent when it finishes the change cycle. And the tendency is to these things to fly past that point and it'll keep rejecting. And they realized that, that they were relying too much on gravity. So they started putting in this spring. This one needed this spring because it had the same problem. So I drilled a little hole in here and put a spring. There's already a hole up here for it. But down here, there is no hole. So I made the hole here and put this spring in. And it, it cured that problem real nice. But on this thing here, you see these little tabs, the, this tab right here? There's four of those tabs on this outer wheel, and this is always revolving with that top uh, fiber gear. It's always turning. You see these tabs? What this tab does is, I'm going to turn this again like this. It's kind of hard to demonstrate these things. The velocity trip lever, which is this, this black lever right here, those tabs kick that lever as the thing's going away. They, they kick that lever, that's the trip lever, they kick it out of the way all the time. And as long as the arm is making a gradual slow movement toward the middle of the record, it will not enter the reject area but it's kind of like a hockey goal all of a sudden you know the, the speed of it as the arm approaches the trip out area the speed of the arm increases suddenly and that is enough to get that arm between those little uh, kickoff points and it releases the trip lever on the uh, and allows that little trip dog that we saw in the first video to couple the bottom cam to the top cam and start the cycle and uh, interesting, but uh, that's the way they work. That's the way Velocity Trip works. And uh, all I have to do now to this thing is just wire back the motor, and uh, it'll be ready to go. And uh, the uh, I've got the turntable all cleaned up, thanks to Regis's hairbrush. That uh, does a great job on the old uh, mouse fur turntables. But anyway, that's it. The uh, web core changer is all back together. The Model 161, or Model 121, I should say. But uh, very, very common record changer. You're going to run into them. They're a lot of work, but they're worth it. I, and uh, now that it's in this condition, it should go another 60 years, hopefully. I won't be around to see it, but uh, hopefully somebody will be. <laughs> and that's it.